All right. Now let's look at the cost flow in job order costing. Okay. So um, last time we learned that man in manufacturing costs, we have direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overheads. So when these costs incur, okay, it will be in the debit side of the manufacturing costs. And then we will, when we use this cost in the production process, okay, we will go to the work in process inventory in the debit side. And then when we finish producing the product, the cost will be into the finished good inventory. And after that, when we sell the products, uh, these costs will be allocated to cost of goods sold. So it's, it's um, similar with the flow of the process of the job, okay? So let's look at the journal entry. When we purchase the raw material on the account, we're going to debit raw material inventory and credit account payable because we buy raw materials on account. Now, if the factory labor cost incur, then we will debit factory labor and credit factory wages payable. If the question give us payroll taxes payable, then we will credit payroll taxes payable. Or if the question give us any fringe benefit payable, then we will credit the fringe benefit payable. Now the third journal entry is happen when we have the actual manufacturing overhead costs incurred. So at the end of the accounting period, we will know how much is the actual manufacturing overhead incurred. We will debit manufacturing overhead and credit accumulated depreciation and also credit property taxes payable or accounts payable, accounts payable. Okay, so we debit manufacturing overhead and credit accumulated depreciation, property taxes payable, account payable. This is uh, the, the accounts that we credit, actually it depends on the question that is given to us, okay? question, it depends on the question. Um, next, when we use the raw material in the production process, now this one you have to be careful. So you will debit work in process inventory for the direct materials. Debit manufacturing overhead for the indirect material. Normally the question will give us like um, factory general use, how much money, that will be the indirect materials. And we're going to credit raw material inventory because we use the raw material in the production process. Now, if we use the factory labor in the production process, we then debit work in process inventory. This one will be for direct labor. Debit manufacturing overhead. This one will be for indirect labor and credit factory labor. Okay, now number three, okay, number three, when we apply manufacturing overhead into the production process, we're going to debit work in process inventory, work in process inventory, and then we will credit um, manufacturing overhead. This one is to record applying manufacturing overhead in the production process. Now, when we finish producing the product, we then debit finished good inventory and credit work in process inventory. Okay. When we sell the product on accounts, we will debit account receivable, sale revenue, debit cost of goods sold, and credit for finished good inventory. Okay. So, um, this is, will be the journal entries in job order costing. Now let's look at the documents that we use in job order costing. So in job order costing, there are three documents that we normally use, the material requisition slip, time ticket, and the job cost sheet, okay? Now the material requisition slip is used when we 
request the materials from the warehouse in order to use in the production process. Okay, so you request to use um, 200 units here and the cost per unit is five pounds per unit. So the total cost will be 1000 pounds. Okay, so this materials requisition slip again is to request uh, to use the material in the production process. Okay. And we're going to record that in the job code sheet in the uh, direct material column. Next is the time ticket. The time ticket is to record the time that the worker worked for us in the, in the factory. Okay, the start time that the worker worked for us. What time that they start to work? What time that they stop? And what is the rate per hour and the total cost of the labor? And this we will uh, record it in the direct labor, direct labor. Okay. And the last column in the job courses is the manufacturing overhead. Now I want you to pay attention here. This manufacturing overhead is the manufacturing overhead applied. Okay. Manufacturing overhead apply is not the actual one. This is the apply one. And we're going to look at how do we calculate the apply manufacturing overhead in the next recording. Okay, so in the job cost sheet, we will have what will be the total cost of direct material, total cost of direct labor, total manufacturing overhead apply, and then we have the total cost for the job. And after you get the total cost from the job, you divide it by how many units that you produce for that job. And that will give you the uh, unit product cost. Okay, the unit product cost. All right, so let's go to the next one. <clears throat> 